In this video, we'll talk about scatter plots and correlation, as well as a few other interesting kinds of plots for summarizing truly multivariate relationships among more than two variables at once. Uh, so let's start with the simplest way to measure an association between two numerical variables, and that's with just a scatter plot. Uh, here's an example of a scatter plot. What you've got on the x axis are the daily stock returns of Apple in 2015 and on the y-axis the daily returns of Microsoft in 2015. So every single dot here represents a single trading day where we've calculated the implied interest rate of holding the stock uh, for a single day. Uh, as you can see, there's some very clear positive correlation right here. You can draw a straight line right through the middle of that plot, uh, but there's also some pretty interesting outliers that represent you know, really, really good days for Microsoft, uh, really, really bad days for Apple, and so forth. Uh, so scatterplot is great for getting just a quick visual sense of what the relationship is between two numerical variables, both the major trend as well as any interesting outliers that might be. Uh, if you've got more than two numerical variables, a really nice way to handle that is with a scatterplot matrix. So that's exactly what you're looking at in this plot right here. Uh, now we've got four numerical variables. There are four sets of stock returns for Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon. And uh, in every little cell of this scatterplot matrix right here, you're seeing a scatterplot between uh, one pair of those two variables. So, you know, this one right here is going to be Apple on the x-axis and Amazon on the y-axis. Uh, this right here will be Facebook on the x-axis, Microsoft on the y-axis. Uh, and so you get a sense of, of how the four variables are all covarying together. Uh, all on the diagonals of this matrix right here, uh, you're getting a histogram uh, of the individual stock return. So we would call this like a joint distribution of, the, of uh, two variables, and this would be like a marginal distribution of a single variable, in this case, Facebook. Okay, uh, if you want to reduce one of those scatter plots to a single number, uh, there's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, you'll learn how to fit least squares lines later, which uh, you know gets you two numbers, a slope and an intercept. Uh, but probably the most standard way to, to talk about a single number that measures association between two variables is the correlation coefficient. If you want to be a little bit more technical, this is called the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, named after a guy called Pearson. Uh, and it's pretty simple. Uh, it goes from minus 1 to 1, uh, 1 being perfect positive correlation, negative 1 being perfect negative correlation, and 0 meaning uncorrelated. So, you know, just to give you a little intuition, here's a scatter plot here where we've churned through the formula uh, to calculate the correlation coefficient r, and it turns out to be 0 0.9. That's pretty close to 1. Here's some weaker negative correlation, uh, minus 0.3. Uh, and if you want to calculate correlation coefficients for a whole batch of numerical variables, like our stock returns before, you could align those in a, in a correlation matrix right here. So the entries in the, uh, in the matrix here, the row is Facebook, and the columns are telling you how Facebook is correlated with the other variables here, 47% correlation with Microsoft. 50% with Amazon and so forth. Uh, and obviously along the diagonals here, you get ones because a variable is perfectly correlated with itself. Now, there's a couple of important things to remember about a correlation coefficient, and this plot right here is gonna get at those. So you gotta keep in mind that a correlation coefficient, it's useful, but it's just one number. And you're taking a, a whole lot of numbers in a scatter plot and reducing it to one, so you're bound to lose some information when you do that. Uh, and this, this plot up here gets at that. Uh, here's four different uh, data sets. These are kind of toy data sets. They're not real, but they, they get it at an important intuition here. Uh, there's obviously some kind of perfect quadratic trend, like a, you know the trace of a fly ball going into the air in a baseball game or something. Here's a perfect straight line with just one little outlier up here. Here's something that looks you know pretty canonically like something that you might want to run a linear regression for, fit a straight line. It's a nice cloud of points distributed around a line. And then finally, here's everything lined up on this vertical with uh, you know this this thing out here. It's like you know Pluto is not a planet anymore. Way out here in the uh, in the far right of the plot. Now these are obviously four different data sets, four different stories about what's going on. Yet if you churn through the math and you compute the correlation coefficient for all four of these data sets, it turns out to be exactly the same thing, about 81 percent. Uh, and so that should tell you right now, hey, you know the correlation coefficient is uh, is losing some information. Uh, and it's not really getting at a complete picture, uh, as useful it is, as it is if you need a one-number summary. Uh, this picture is also getting at a similar message here, uh, that the correlation coefficient <clears throat> is, uh, while useful, limited in its utility. And uh, these are, again, three data sets, three different stories about what's going on. Here's something where there's, like a, again, a sort of parabolic kind of trend. Here's a, you know, a ring, a circle kind of thing going on. 
And then here, this, I don't know what this looks like, uh, you know, some kind of hyperbola or something, if you want to get technical. Uh, if you take all three of these data sets and you compute the correlation between the x variable and the y variable, uh, there's obviously some sort of relationship there, yet you get a correlation coefficient of zero. Okay? Uh, and that should tell you that a, perfect cor that a, a correlation coefficient of zero, uh, which we call uncorrelated, does not necessarily mean that two variables are unrelated or independent of each other in the ordinary English sense of the word. Um, the reason is that the correlation coefficient is so tied up with the assumption of a linear relationship between the two variables that it kind of breaks down to quantify nonlinear relationships uh, like these. Uh, and, and so the lesson, I would say, of these two plots is, well, really, plot your data. Always plot your data. Uh, correlation coefficient is just one number, and it can only tell you so much about the relationship between two sets of numbers. Scatter plots like these here, or like the ones we saw of the stock data before, are much richer and give you a lot more information. Okay, so now what happens if, uh, if we have uh, both multiple categorical variables and multiple numerical variables going on? Uh, let's talk about a few techniques for being able to visualize those, a few different techniques here. So uh, one very favorite technique of mine is called a lattice plot. Uh, and here's an example of a lattice plot in figure 1.11 right here. So the three variables here, every dot in these scatter plots is a car, uh, or a vehicle, I should say. There's some trucks and SUVs in there, too. Uh, the two numerical variables are highway miles per gallon and the horsepower of the car, the engine. So, you know, bigger horsepower engines are going to be more powerful, typically faster cars or bigger cars, that kind of thing. Uh, and then the categorical variable is the class. So we've got five classes here, minivan, sedan, sports car, SUV, and wagon. And so a lattice plot, it takes the same plot, in this case, highway miles per gallon by horsepower, and it tiles that over every class. So what you're seeing is just a replication of that same mileage versus horsepower plot for all the minivans in this panel, all the sedans here, all the sports cars here, uh, and so forth. Uh, and, and I love lattice plots like this because they really do get at some kind of truly multivariate relationship right here. You know, first of all, uh, you know, what are some things that we could observe? Uh, obviously, across all vehicle classes, the trend between mileage and horsepower is negative as the engine gets uh, more powerful and bigger or highway miles per gallon is going to go down. That's very intuitive. Uh, you can also see kind of, the, because the axes are the same in each of these panels, it's, uh, you know, the, the y-axis and the x-axis are identical, you can also reason about which class is lower or higher overall. So you can see, uh, no surprise here, the SUVs on average tend to be shifted down in this plot compared to like the sedans, the sports cars, and the wagons. Um, you know, one, one interesting thing is that the, the mileage and horsepower relationship clearly becomes nonlinear here at low mileage sedans. And, you know, probably a lot of that is like the electric cars, the Prius, the, you know, the things that have a, a, a I shouldn't say the, the electric, the hybrid cars. Uh, and you're not seeing that so much for the sports cars, the SUVs, which look pretty linear over their uh, domains right here. So there's some interesting multivariate patterns that are coming out of a, a lattice plot like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, these are a favorite of mine for exploring data sets that have both categorical and numer numerical variables. Here's another lattice plot where we're looking now at two categorical variables and one numerical variable. Uh, here, the two categoricals are obviously still class, so it's, again, it's the minivan, sedan, sports car, etc. And now we're looking at engine cylinders. I guess you would call that more of like an ordinal variable uh, in this data set, uh, uh, because everything falls into, you know, four, or six, or eight cylinders. Um, and, you know, you can just get a sense of how the horsepower uh, is varying across both of those classes jointly. Uh, and everything looks, for example, shifted down in the sedan compared to the sports car, even for the same number of, of engine cylinders. Okay, and, and uh, another really nice kind of plot uh, that we could see, uh, it, it again uses the device of the, of the lattice plot. You can see that here in figure 29. Uh, I'm sorry, on page 29, figure uh, 1.13. Uh, and so this is actually three numerical variables at once. And what we've done is taken one of the numerical variables and we've cut it into bins. We, that's called discretizing or binning the numerical variable. Uh, what, are the, what are the three variables here? So these are the locations of earthquakes off Fiji, an island in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and the, uh, the three variables here are the latitude and the longitude of the earthquake. 
Uh, and, and I think I've got this backwards. I'm pretty sure that should be longitude and that should be latitude. So, so sorry about that. Um, the, uh, the third variable right here is the depth beneath the Earth's surface. So, you know, 111 means 111 kilometers beneath the Earth's surface. And what they've done uh, is they have located every earthquake uh, in those three coordinates, latitude, longitude, and depth. And what we're looking at is the location of those earthquakes. Okay, and so it's pretty cool. You can see as you go deeper. So here's the, the shallow earthquakes, and here are the deeper earthquakes in terms of where the actual epicenter of that quake is in the Earth's crust. And you can see that the latitude and longitude positions of all those earthquakes changes very systematically as you go from shallow here all the way down to, to deeper. So it's cool. You're getting a sense from this plot that the deeper earthquakes are coming from a systematically different part of the ocean uh, than the shallower earthquakes. Uh, so uh, to review, we've seen a lot of techniques for visualizing and summarizing variation among numerical variables here. Uh, the, the common theme through a lot of these is the, uh, the use of lattice plots to visualize multivariate relationships, whether it's multiple categorical, multiple numerical, or all uh, numerical uh, variables at once. Uh, and that's a, a very, very powerful way uh, to uncover visually, just in an exploratory fashion, relationships among multiple variables in a data set.